Now let us look at how electrons are transported in complex number 2. You know that complex number 2 is called succinate UQH2 oxidoreductase. So this is the name of the complex. Succinate UQH2 oxidoreductase. It means it will transfer electrons from succinate who is the receiver? UQH2. So this is what it means by this name. Look at the structure of this complex. This complex is again a large protein. And this protein has about 140 kilodalton as the molecular weight. 140 kilodalton. And this is consisting of about four different subunits. These subunits are there is a large subunit of 70 kd, another relatively small subunit of 27 kd, then there is a subunit of about uh, uh, 15 kd and 13 kd. So these are the four subunits present in succinate uh, ubiquinone uh, UQH2 oxidoreductase. Now this enzyme also has several iron sulfur proteins. The iron sulfur proteins are 4 Fe, 4 S iron sulfur protein, 3 Fe, 4 S iron sulfur protein. It also has 2 Fe, 2 S iron sulfur proteins. Varieties of them. They are all required for transporting electrons. Apart from this iron sulfur protein, it also has an FAD in the active site of this enzyme. You know something very interesting about this enzyme is this enzyme also has another name and that name is succinate dehydrogenase. Succinate dehydrogenase. Do you remember where you have come across this name? In the TCS cycle. So in TCS cycle you have come across this name in the conversion of succinate to fumarate and that is one and the same as succinate UQH2 oxidoreductase. It is one and the same. So therefore this enzyme is the only membrane bound enzyme in the TCA cycle and that gives a direct link with the uh, electron transport chain. So if somebody asks you which is the enzyme which will connect a TCS cycle with the electron transport chain, this is the enzyme which will connect it. So now let us see how exactly electrons are transported in this, uh, in this uh, protein, in the complex number 2. So it is very interesting, uh, this protein as we have seen it is a membrane bound protein so therefore this is the protein and this will be the membrane okay so this is the membrane and this will be inner membrane space and this will be the matrix side so this is very important for us to know now what will happen if the first reaction is the conversion of succinate so succinate is converted to fumarate okay so which is the coenzyme of this particular enzyme FAD FAD is the coenzyme now FAD gets converted to FADH2 okay now we need to pause for a moment and think which are the ways by which we can get FAD can you think of ways by which we can get FAD from what you have learned? So far you have seen three ways by which FAD can be produced. One way is in TCS cycle itself. This is how FADH2 is produced. But this FADH2 is in the mitochondrial matrix. In the second way by which you can produce FADH2 is beta oxidation. If the first enzyme of beta oxidation is fatty acyl coil dehydrogenase which is an FAD dependent enzyme that produces another FADH2 
but where is beta oxidation happening in the mitochondrial matrix now you see how all these are con getting connected you will see the link connections now in the third way by which FADH2 can be made available is a cytoplasmic NADH so NADH is produced in the cytoplasm through glycolysis so glyco that NADH is converted to an FADH2 through a pathway known as glycerol phosphate shuttle so glycerol phosphate shuttle will produce one FADH2 so these are the three ways by which FADH2 is made available for this particular for complex number 2 and it is very important to note down that FADH2 enters at complex number 2 it has got significance when we calculate P by O ratio let us go ahead and understand how is the mechanism happening now this FADH2 which is the reduced form so fumarate gets oxidized FADH2 is formed now the FADH2 gets oxidized to FAD now in the process now it is no more hydrogen carrier hydrogen transport the hydrogen will split so we have seen that if the hydrogen is splitting there will be two electrons and two H plus two H plus is transported to the mitochondrial matrix what happens to the two electrons if the two electrons are accepted by iron sulfur protein now remember in iron sulfur protein iron will change from one oxidation state into the next oxidation state it will change from Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus okay so once it becomes Fe2 plus which is the reduced form what will happen is it will get back to its oxidized form so in the process what is going to happen is if the electrons are transferred to a UQ molecule so this UQ will accept electrons and UQ is a hydrogen transporter so now UQ needs two protons two protons are added to this and it becomes UQH2 okay so therefore if the electrons which are present in succinate is transferred via 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 and finally it is collected in the form of UQH2 how did we collect electrons at the end of complex number one as UQH2 in complex number two also we have collected as UQH2 if the whole purpose of complex number one and two is to collect electrons in the form of UQH2 that is the whole purpose because UQH2 becomes the starting point for complex number three and in this context we need to know one more thing that is when is FADH2 take part in a reaction or when is NADH taking part in a reaction so you can see that when an alkane has to be converted to an alkene FADH2 is taking part when an aldehyde has to be converted into an alcohol or a keto group has to be converted into an alcohol NADH2 will be taking part this is a point that you need to note down 